this is Miss Cindy from the Crown Point Community Library and today I'm going to be bringing the library into your home with some summer reading steam. At summer reading our theme this year is imagine your story and each week we're going to look at a different aspect of stories or storytelling. Um, this week we're going to be focusing on um, castles and kings, queens, uh, princes and knights and princesses, royalty, all of that kind of stuff. So I thought for our STEAM challenge for this week, we are going to be building castles. And if you don't know what STEAM is, STEAM is simply uh, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. And there's different ways that you can incorporate all that into the castle that you build. So let's start by, by um, talking about castles and what makes up a castle, what a castle looks like, and then I'm going to introduce your challenge. The first book I'm going to share with you, so I just pulled out some nonfiction books. Um, from our nonfiction section, and this one is Kids Everything Castles. I marked a couple pages. I'm not going to read the whole book because there's a lot of information, but this is a book that you, if you want to find more information, you can certainly check out and read on your own. There's other castle books that we have and books about knights um, if you're interested in finding out more information. So Kids Everything Book of Castles. I marked a couple pages in here. The first one talks about what is a castle. Pretend you can travel 800 years back in time and ask the people you meet to describe a castle. You'd get many answers. It's a symbol of, of might, the king says as he sweeps his hand across the map, a map, map dotted with many castles. Maybe it's just a symbol to his majesty, says a noble lord, while his lady shows you around their castle, castle's feasting hall, gardens, and sleeping chambers. But to us, it's our home. Home, sirrah, it's a fortress too, says one of the lord's knights, as he points out the castle's many defenses, its towers, its moat, its murder holes for raining arrows down on enemies. Humph, snorts a peasant in the fields, a castle is just a pain in my neck. A home, a fortress, a symbol. A castle was all of these things in Europe during the Middle Ages, also known as the medieval period. It was a time when land was more precious than gold and kings rewarded their supporters with pieces of the realm and noble titles. These nobles built castles and hired their own supporters from noble knights for defense down to lowly servants who did the dirty work. No matter your rank in this feudal society, the castle loomed large in your life. And again, here's some pictures of castles. The evolution of castles. Life was no fairy tale in the 9th century France. Invaders terrorized the countryside. Vikings sailed swift longboats up rivers to pillage villages. Fed up with these raiders, warlords built wooden forts to surround their homes and serve as havens for the local farmers. These first castles spread across Europe and evolved into the towering stone structures we know today. And this is how castles have evolved over time. So it started with very simple castles here. Um, they became wooden structures. They were first built as wooden structures, but that they realized very quickly wasn't a very smart idea because wooden structures could easily be burned. So then they, they developed the stone keep which they kept in later cast castles, but built walls of defense around them. Um, and then, be then as the as the times changed and castles uh, became more for kings and and wealthy people, um, that was when they became uh, much more ornate and decorative. It says when England's Edward the First launched his campaign to subdue Wales in 1277, he knew castles would be his key to victory. In just 12 years, he built the four he built four of the world's most impressive castles using concentric architecture and other defensive techniques that he had seen as a warrior in the Crusades. And I'm, we're, we're going to talk the most about these concentric castles. Um, a concentric castle is considered the ultimate in defense design. It consisted of a courtyard ringed by stone walls with a keep and living area built inside the inner walls. And so that's what we're going to kind of be talking about in building. So this keep, which is where they would live, they realized that they did much better if they put that inside stone walls, put a moat around it and other, um, other defenses for that 
um, for the outside walls to protect those who were on the inside. How to build a castle. A small workforce could build a castle in just eight days. That's the very first one that I showed you. Remember back here, this little guy? That could be built in eight days, but it was only made of wood. However, to build the complex stone keeps and concentric castles, it was a major construction project that involved thousands of workers and took many years, most of the time, even decades. So it would take 10 or more years to build a concentric castle. If you were a medieval lord with a bottomless treasury, you would need that to fund the castle's construction. So it cost a lot of money. So they had to have a lot of money in order to be able to, to build their castle. The first thing that you would have to do is you would have to get a license. So first, um, any English lord who built a castle without the king's permission risked having it demolished. So first he had to request a license to, to grant the, the permission to be able to build it. Secondly, you'd have to hire a master mason. A master mason was a highly skilled architect who drew up the castle's plans and managed the construction of the project. Then you'd have to gather the materials. Lords needed stone and lots of it to build a castle. Stone had to be broken free or quarried from the earth and hauled to the building site, often across great distances. Castle builders didn't have the tractor trailers of the, in the Middle Ages, so they transported heavy blocks of limestone, sandstone in boats or horse-drawn wagons. Wood was needed to build the scaffolding and the roofs. Then you have to hire some builders. A vast cast of specialized workers made up the typical castle construction crew. Freemasons shaped the stones into square blocks and that rough masons laid to build the walls. Blacksmiths fixed the tools, carpenters built the scaffolding, lime burners created the mortar, and all of these workers had to be paid, making castle building an expensive business. And then they put it all together, is the last step. At first glance, a medieval building site looked like a modern construction zone. Workers wielded familiar tools, hammers, chisels, mortar, and trowels. They erected scaffolding alongside and inside walls that they were building. They used winches and hoists to lift heavy loads. The difference, of course, is that all these tools and lifting machines were all people-powered. A castle wall was built like a big stone sandwich. An outer and inner layer of, of stone was filled with rubber and mortar. Construction had to stop once the weather grew too chilly for the mortar to set properly, so it's no surprise that a large castle could take years to build. Typically, a castle under construction grew just 10 feet in height per year. So 10 feet in height, think about that. That's all they were able to build in one year. That's about the, the, the distance from the floor to the ceiling in your house. And that's all that they were able to build in one year. So it took a long time. Another book that I found that I wanted to share with you was a book called Questions and Answers, Knights and Castles. And this one we're gonna talk about castle design. So we found out a little bit about how castles are made and why they were made. And now we're gonna look at the design. Castle builders tried all different kinds of designs to make their building stronger. One of the simplest was the stone tower or keep. Remember we talked about that in the last book and I showed you that picture but it wasn't enough on its, on its own. So what they did is here you'll see a picture and you'll see how the keep is in the center and then they built the walls around it. So they would have um, the keep in the middle, an inner wall, and then an outer wall outside of that. So that meant if somebody was going to attack their castle, they would have to get through the outer wall. They'd have, then they'd have to get through the inner wall and then finally they could get into the keep to get um, to the Lord um, and take over that castle. So that's, that's the way the castles were, were designed. Um, here's a close-up picture of a concentric castle. And you can see how you have your walls on the outside and your keep is on the inside. The keep is where, um, where the kitchens would be, where, where the, your bedrooms or where everything was, like the life center of your castle. Um, a concentric castle was a castle with two parallel sets of walls one inside the other, as well as giving the enemy two barriers to get through. These twin walls provided to defenders with two firing platforms. 
So they built them so that they had an inner and outer wall. If you can see this. But then the, the, the army, the, they could stand up on this ledge to help to protect the castle during an invasion. Okay, so our STEAM challenge for this week is the Castle Challenge. And maybe you've been to the library and you picked up this, this brown paper bag that has all of your supplies in it for castle building. If you didn't, don't worry because most of these activities are gonna be things that you can do with stuff that you have at home. So what you'll find is on the outside is your paper that has the challenge. And on the back, it has the information about what your challenge is going to be. You'll notice that the first thing on this paper is to read the book called Bloom from our tum from Tumble Books. And you can access that through our library website. And you um, read that book and it's about a, a kingdom that had their castle is made out of glass and that's not very... Um, it's not a very good design for a castle, so they need to come up with something better, and it's about um, how they design their castle. And then inside your bag, you will find a piece of paper that has um, other challenges that you can do um, with for castles. And you will find, for this week, a stack of index cards. If you don't didn't get a bag or you don't have index cards, or if you want to, if you have extra index cards at home and you want to add to that, you can use more. Um, you'll in your bag you'll have around 50 index cards that you can use uh, to build your castle. And and the the idea is to see how tall or how wide or how great of a design you can come up with. And you're going just simply going to use tape. You can use a Sharpie if you want to draw features on there, like draw windows or draw different elements. Um, you can take scissors and you could cut it to make it to have so that it has like a, like a turret type shape at the top. But you're really going to just be taking this tape and taping these pieces together and creating your castle. And you can decide how you want that castle to look. If you want to have, um, you do a concentric castle that has your keep in the inside, your inner and your outer walls. If you want, just wanted the challenge of seeing how tall of a castle you can make with your with your index cards, you can do that too. And again, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have index cards or if you want to add to it, you can even use playing cards. Just check with your parent first to make sure that that's okay before you tape them into your structure. So thank you for joining me today. Um, I would love to see your castle designs. Please feel free to share those with me on uh, our Facebook Messenger page and check out um, the library website and you can check out, um, you can check out, there's some ideas on Pinterest that go along with castles, but have fun. Uh, see what you can come up with and share your ideas. Take care.